Hey, Chiefs Kingdom, do you plan on attending a Chiefs game in 2020? I would like to go to one. Here's the thing. For us to go, there's probably a decent chance you're going to have to wear a face covering. Don't worry, we got you guys covered. You see the link below, chatsports.com slash Chiefs mask. Go ahead and rep the Chiefs in style by staying safe in style by going to that link. We'll tell you more about that later on in the show. But first, let's jump into today's mailbag video. Special thanks to everybody using hashtag Chiefs. I am your host, Harrison Graham. Lots of questions to get into, so let's go ahead and jump on in. Monster Jam fan 0311, loyal watcher, he asks, we still need a cornerback because Breland is about to get suspended. How about Logan Ryan? Well, we've talked about Logan Ryan a couple of times, and we've obviously mentioned the Breland looming suspension a few times as well. I'm on board. Now, the latest, you know, the last week or so for Ryan is that the Jets and Dolphins were interested, but that has seemingly fallen through. Here's the problem. He wants more money than he's going to get. He thought he was going to get Kendall Fuller money where it was going to be north of $10 million per year, and that did not happen. Now, I think he would be an ideal nickel replacement for Fuller. He's not really much of an outside corner, so he's not going to you know, cover for Breland while he's gone, but they still could use a guy like Logan Ryan who made a lot of plays on the football last year. Yeah, he was targeted a ton. That's why he has over 100 tackles, but he held his own as well with the 18 pass breakups, had the four interceptions, more turnovers on this defense would not be a bad thing. I think he could plug right in, be your nickel back, and then, you know, they'll piece together the second outside corner spot next to Traverius Ward for as long as Bashad Breland is suspended. Hopefully it's not a lengthy suspension. Hopefully there's no suspension at all. There's no official word from the league, but the report out there is that the Chiefs fully expect Breland to get suspended. Bringing in a guy like Logan Ryan would be a good thing for Kansas City. In the end, it's all about price tag, and the Chiefs don't have a ton of salary cap space. So we'll see if it happens. I don't think it's super likely, but hey, if that price tag goes down far enough, I would certainly be interested. What should the Chiefs do with Logan Ryan? Type S for sign him, type P for pass. I'd like him to sign him, but I think in the end, they're going to end up passing. I don't think it's going to happen. I'll make this the pinned comment on today's video, so just scroll on down and answer this question if you get hit with an ad break. All right, Chiefs fan 454 asks, will McCall Hardman have a breakout season? What should we expect? I think there's a decent chance. I like McCall Hardman a lot. I thought he took advantage of limited opportunities last year. I thought he should have gotten more reps, especially later in the season. I think he'll be more featured in the offense this year, despite Kansas City bringing back basically their entire offense. And long term, I think he's the Watkins replacement. Watkins obviously restructured to come back this year. I doubt he's here past 2020 unless he's willing to take a pretty significant pay cut on his next contract. But McCole Hardman did a lot of good things as a rookie. If you compare him next to Sammy Watkins, he was almost as productive yardage-wise with half the receptions. Over 20 yards a catch, he doubled them in touchdown receptions, also added one on the ground as well. He's really good in the jet sweep game, return game as well. Had a lot of touchdowns in 2019. I think he can approach double-digit touchdowns in 2020. I like Hardman a lot. Uh, obviously, when they drafted him, there was some uncertainty around Tyree Kill's future, but those two together on the same offense, that is speed all over the place. We'll see if he has a major year this year. Again, the whole arsenal is back. They re-signed Demarcus Robinson, Watkins restructured to stay. You still have Tyree Kill. You still have Travis Kelsey. Uh, so I don't think we're going to see a 1,200-yard season from McCall Hardman, but I do think that he will get more opportunities than he got last year. I do think he has jumped Demarcus Robinson on the depth chart. So what do you think? Seven touchdowns in 2020. Type O for over. Type U for under. Had six receiving last year. I think eight in total with one special teams and one uh, on the ground as well in the jet sweep. Over under seven in 2020. I'm typing my O for over. I'm pretty positive. I like his ability to get into the end zone. All right, guys, you know the monthly challenge. We're trying to get to 5,000 subs by June 1st. We're like 340 away by the time we're filming this video. So very, very close. I think we're going to get there easily. I don't. That deadline doesn't worry me a bit. Share that link below, youtube.com slash Chiefs TV with a friend. It'll help us get there. We're putting up videos almost every single day now, the latest rumors, news, and much more Q&A videos like this as well. Go ahead and subscribe. We'll keep plugging out videos for you guys. 
Let's go to Devin Nutter, another loyal, a loyal watcher here on the Chiefs Report. Will the Chiefs have a top 10 defense and offense this year now that they're used to Spags defense? I think offense is obvious, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. They're definitely top 10. They're probably the best offense, quite frankly, if they stay fully healthy. Uh, defensive rankings from last year. Look, and points allowed, which is quite frankly the most important, they were number seven last year, guys. You could argue this was a fringe top 10 defense last year. Now, they certainly weren't as good on the ground uh, against the run, but they got a lot better after they signed Mike Pinnell. They were like, I think, 18th or so after they brought him in. So they were middle of the pack against the run, if not above average. Uh, once they brought him on board. So I expect the season numbers to be better there. I think this can be a top 10 defense. I like what Spagnuolo is doing. The 4-3 definitely helped. Chris Jones should have a healthier season this year. And these three guys in particular, including Jones, uh, they anchor this defense. Uh, Tyron Matthew had an all-pro type of season last year. I would expect the same this year. Frank Clark dealt with neck issues last year. Chris Jones dealt with injuries. If those two guys are healthy, they're going to be wrecking quarterbacks all season long. And that's the key to having a good defense, getting after the quarterback and having good secondary play. Uh, if the Chiefs can get adequate play from their corners, I think this defense will be really, really solid. Will Kansas City have a top 10 defense, type 1 for yes, type 2 for no? It'll be close. I think if they do, they're certainly going to be very, very tough to beat. Uh, I'll type my 1 for yes. I don't think it'll be top 5, but top 10, I definitely think that is very much a possibility. All right, guys, we told you a little bit about these earlier, these Chiefs face coverings. When you go to that link, chatsports.com slash Chiefs mask, it's not just for football games either. We all want to go to games, but whether or not that happens, we got to do things in our daily lives. We got to go to the grocery store. And the best way to stay safe is to wear a face covering. So why not rep your favorite team? We got this three pack for just 25 bucks. Now, we have been getting a lot of these ordered, so they're a little back ordered right now, but the sooner you order, the sooner it's going to get in. So go ahead and hop in line. Go to chatsports.com slash Chiefs Mask and get this three pack for just 25 bucks. All right, let's go to Colin here. What do you think about Breland Speaks? Very simple question here. I have a lot of thoughts on Speaks. Uh, my main thought is, is I'm actually not convinced he makes the roster this year. I think he's going to have to compete for a roster spot. Obviously, he missed all of last year with the knee injury. It, to me, it was kind of an IR stash, to be frank, uh, to save the roster spot there. Uh, second round pick a couple of years ago only had one and a half sacks in 2018. Now, I do think the 4-3 scheme helps his game more than the 3-4 from back in 2018. So I think that's a po positive for Speaks. But the Chiefs brought in Taco Charlton for a reason. They want to have competition at, you know, those back end of the roster spots. This defensive line is going to have a heavy rotation. Now, could Speaks and Taco make the roster? Certainly it's possible, but they also drafted Michael Dana. They brought him on board. Passanio's not uh, missing the cut. He's going to make it the team after a breakout season last year. Okafor's coming back from injury, so... It's going to be tough for Breland Speaks uh, to A, may leave his mark on this football team, and B, maybe even make the roster. Now, there is a chance both these guys make it, but if one of these has to go, which one are you picking to keep? Type S for Breland Speaks or type C for Taco Charlton. I would expect they keep Speaks because they invested in him if they have to make that decision. But again, they could keep both. S for Speaks, C for Charlton. Go ahead and let me know. All right, Swagson124, what is your way too early 2021 mock draft? Well, I don't have a full mock draft for you guys, but I have two positions that I think the Chiefs could target in the 2021 draft. And to no surprise, cornerback is still one of those. I think it's the biggest need now, and I think there's a decent chance it's the biggest need next year with Breland a free agent again and uh, Traverius Ward not under contract for very long. Sean Wade, he's going to be really good out of Ohio State. He was actually better than Damon Arnett last year. Uh, he was the second corner behind uh, who's the kid? Jeff Akuda at Ohio State this past season. Uh, Sertan from Alabama, he's really good. Paulson Adebo, I thought he might come out this past year. He decided to go back to school. He's probably a first-round type of player. Eric Stokes, Darion Kendrick, uh, they should get more opportunities as juniors this year at their respective schools. And then linebackers still, we'll see. This partially depends on how Willie Gay performs, but Anthony Hitchens and Damian Wilson are not long-term solutions, so they could go this route as well. Micah Parsons, terrific player. He will probably go higher than where the, the Chiefs draft. Dylan Moses is back at Alabama. I like him a lot coming off injury uh, there for the Tide. Nick Bolton, Charles Snowden, uh, tough Borland. Keep, uh, keep 
your eye on him. I love that name for a linebacker, especially. I think he's more of a day two player. But I think corner and linebacker, kind of like this year, are probably the biggest needs you're looking at. I'll throw wide receiver as a dark horse because Sammy Watkins and Demarcus Robinson could easily be gone after this season. What position, as of now, should the Chiefs draft in 2021? Go ahead and let me know. I say cornerback, but obviously a bunch of stuff will change between now and next year's draft. Go ahead and cast your votes in the comments section. Let's go to Cole Keller. Uh, predict a dark horse to make the roster on each side of the ball. Also, any news on Suggs? Real quick on Suggs, I haven't heard anything. Uh, I think he's either going to sign a one-year deal with a contender like the Ravens where he spent most of his career, possibly the Chiefs, or another contender, or he's going to retire. I think he's weighing what he wants to do right now. But as far as dark horses to make each side of the ball, uh, I think I'm going to do a roster projection video sometime very soon, so be on the lookout for that. But I'll just mention a couple of guys that I think have a shot to make the roster. That might be a bit surprising. Jordan Tiamu. Uh, the former Ole Miss quarterback played in the XFL. I think he's got a shot because, A, the Chiefs carried three quarterbacks last year. Why not do it again this year where you have Mahomes, you have Henny, and then Tiamu is kind of your developmental type. A dual threat quarterback has a similar stylistically to Mahomes. Isn't anywhere close as talented. Uh, let's make that clear. But I could see them keeping him around and trying to make him the long-term backup. But then keep an eye on this kid, Amari Cobb out of, out of Marshall. Um... Not a lot uh, not a lot of articles or anything on this kid, but I like his athleticism. He was a UDFA that they picked up after the draft. 6'4", 225 there. Versatile player. He can rush the quarterback. He's a good tackler. And linebacker is an opportunity uh, for competition on this roster. It's not a position of strength. So if he shows out and has special teams value, he could have a chance to make this roster as a premier athlete for the Kansas City Chiefs.